What's up my friends, welcome back! Months back I bought a bunch of these modules. These are DC motor speed controllers. This module could control the power applied to any kind of DC devices that don't require a very stable input. They are basically used to control the speed of DC motors, but you could also use it to control the brightness of an LED strip for example, as you can see here. On my oscilloscope I have the output applied to the LED strip. As you can see, the bigger is the width, the higher is the brightness of the LEDs. So this circuit is called a DC motor speed controller, a PWM dimmer, but it is also called a power controller. I know that this module only cost a few bucks, but I thought it should be nice to build my own circuit and show you how it works. So in this video we will see a very basic circuit with the 555 timer, see how the PWM configuration of this timer works and build our own power controller. So let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back! As you can see, this module has a positive and negative input, but also a positive and negative output. It works from 6 up to 28 volts. It also has a potentiometer to adjust the power and a heatsink to keep everything cool. But what is power? Well, in electronics, power equals to voltage times current. So let's apply a fixed value voltage to the module and connect a DC motor to the output and let's see what it will do. Since this is a power controller and the voltage applied to it is a fixed value, the only thing it's there to change is the current in order to control power. But is that right? Well, as you can see, I rotate the potentiometer and the speed of the motor will change. You might think that the voltage at the output is changing, as it will do if you were using a voltage regulator, and that's why the speed of the motor is changing. But that's not true. If we connect a normal DC multimeter to the output, yes, we could see how the voltage is changing when rotating the potentiometer. But this is a lie, because the multimeter will give you the DC average of the voltage, not the real amplitude in any certain moment. If we connect the oscilloscope to the output, we can see that the voltage, the peak to peak value, is the same all the time, and it's equal to the input value, in this case 12 volts. The only thing that changes is the amount of time that the power is switched on versus the time it's switched off. This is called duty cycle control. So we are not controlling the voltage value, only the amount of time that we apply the voltage to the output load. So it's clear that this module won't control the power for any kind of devices. So if you want to control the power of let's say an audio amplifier and control the volume, well that just won't work, since the amplifier circuit will need a stable voltage input that won't change its value all the time. But this will be a nice project if you want to control the brightness of LEDs or DC motor speed. In my case, I want to create a turntable for my 3D printed parts and control the speed of the spinning table with this module. So sorry for this long theory introduction, let's just mount this circuit. So what do we need to build our own power controller? We need a 555 timer. For the switch we will use a N channel MOSFET, a drill PCB to mount all the parts on it, a few extra components to create the PWM configuration of the 555 timer a big potentiometer to control the speed and of course some PCB connectors and very important a heatsink for the MOSFET. The first thing we have to do is to create the pulse width modulated signal or better known as PWM. The 555 timer IC can create a few different signals and one of those is the width modulated one, which basically means that we will have a square wave signal with the same frequency all the time and the only thing that will change is the width of the pulse. This is the basic schematic of a 555 timer PWM configuration. So how does this IC create a width modulated signal? Well, the basic goes like this. 
we have a capacitor connected to pin 7 which is the discharge pin of this IC and to the main supply through a resistor. The capacitor will charge to this resistor. When it reaches a threshold value, the internal components will activate the discharge through pin 7. So now we have a charging and discharging process that will create a square wave. But here we have our potentiometer. On this side, on this diode, is the charging process. And on the other side is the discharging process. By changing the potentiometer value, we will add more time to one or the other side, and by that changing the amount of time that the pulse is high or low. And that is our duty cycle control. But this doesn't end here. The 555 timer won't be able to output big currents, so if you want to control a big DC motor directly with the 555 timer pulse, two things could happen. That the motor won't spin at all, or that the timer gets fried. So for that we will need powerful switching. I'll use an N-channel MOSFET, in this case the RF-Z44N, which is one of the most common MOSFETs used in DIY projects. It can withstand voltages up to 55 volts and a drain to surge current of 30 up to 40 amps, so that's perfect. All we have to do is to apply the PWM signal from the 555 timer to the gate of this transistor, as in this new schematic here. The drain of the N-channel MOSFET will be the output together with the main positive input rail and the source will be connected to ground. Very important, we should also add a diode between the drain of the MOSFET and the positive input. So when the MOSFET is not activated, the current spikes from the motor coils should have a path to flow through for that short amount of time and not burn the MOSFET switch. That's it guys, this is the final schematic for the project that we will build. I first mount it on a breadboard and make sure that it works ok. I place the 555 timer, the oscillating capacitor and the extra components, the potentiometer to control the pulse width, the RFZ44N MOSFET and the main supply. Connect the DC motor. Apply 12 volts at the input and let's see if we can control the speed. And of course, it works perfect. I gather all the components. Get a piece of drilled prototyping PCB and solder everything in place. On one side I have the input connectors and the output on the other side. Be careful of the polarity, we have positive and negative. The final module will also work with voltages up to 28 volts, since that is the maximum voltage that the 555 timer could withstand. Also make sure you add a heat dissipator to the MOSFET, unless you want it to catch on fire. So there you go, I've got my own homemade DC motor speed controller. It was quite fun to build. If you want to build your own and learn something on the way, please check my webpage for more details. You also have the schematics and examples in the description. If my tutorials help you and you would like to help my projects like this one, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below as always. I would really appreciate that guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.